I really want to say congrats. I've seen the first four, and my only complaint is I don't have five through eight. Oh, that's a great complaint to have. Um, hopefully that isn't the audience's complaint. That would mean something has gone terribly wrong with the streaming platform. Um. <laughs> well, I'm actually curious about that. Um, some shows get released weekly and some yeah. are like bingeable. So how did you guys decide to release it all at once? Was this a prime video decision? Did you ever debate doing it weekly? Oh, yeah, we debated every version of it. Um, uh, honestly, and we were on either side of it at very various points of the conversation, because I think we're all kind of trying to decide how to do this uh, in that sort of new normal. And a part of it for us was there's no... Um, we're missing our must-see TV night. You know, uh, if uh, I, I was working on Silicon Valley back when Jonah was doing Westworld, uh, Sunday night was a great night to, to come out. Uh, and even if you didn't like one of the shows, you might watch one of the shows because there were four shows sort of lashed together uh, in a really sort of ritualized fashion. I don't know what night we would have chosen uh, if we if it was to be weekly. Um, I know Disney's doing Wednesday at midnight. I don't know if that's, as a viewer working for me, uh, it's not appointment uh, viewing to stay up till midnight and watch, you know, Ashoka or, or whatever have you. Um, and I want to watch those shows. But yeah, until uh, one of these streamers takes a night and claims it, I think that the, the binge model is going to persist. That's my. So one of the things. Yeah. Not, and what do I know? Uh, you know, but yeah. <laughs> no, by, by the way, you, you bring up a, a, like uh, there. Listen, it could go either way. And I think some some fans love the bingeable model. But then when certain shows are released weekly anyway. It's, yeah. It's yeah. No, thing. it can help the show. Right. Because there's the the the, the discourse, of course, uh, <laughs> that's the what we're after. But sometimes with a show like this, the discourse can backfire and they, you know, you see your ending coming. I think someone a long time ago said no writer's room can compete with Reddit. Uh, it's like 10,000 geniuses working 24 seven. Sure. They're going to get ahead of you. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think in, in the sort of eight, eight episode model, binging works quite well. One of my complaints of uh, streaming shows is that there's often a very long break between seasons. Yes. And so this is a very um, uh, big show to make. Yes. So my question is, after season one finished, did you guys like continue doing any sort of writer's room or arc out future things? So if Prime Video says, hey, this is a big hit, we want more episodes, you can sort of jump in and get started. Yeah, I mean, to, you know, real under the hood stuff, I'm on an over, Geneva and I are on overall deals. Um, we wrapped season one. We started working on season two in the hopes of there being uh, interest in that from Amazon and in the hopes of shrinking that gap. Uh, because, yeah, uh, leaving people on a cliffhanger for two years is a bizarre impulse. You know, like I, I come from as a viewer, I'm like, I could barely handle the TNG season finale cliffhangers. Those drove me crazy. Uh, but they were some of my best memories in television. So, um yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, we're, we're definitely trying to shrink that gap, a hundred percent. Do you guys have um, like any sort of scripts, or is it more like this is what we would do with season two? This is our arc, and we just have to write the episodes. We're at a point where um, we we just have to hire writers, write the episodes, shoot the episodes. Um, so we're ready to go. Uh, yeah, uh, but you know that's. Uh, there's a, a lot of decisions about it, it is a big show and it is a big investment. And uh, I think Amazon wants to be absolutely sure they want to make a second season before they they pay for it all, because um, it's an undertaking. I'm going to go out on a ledge and say you're getting a second season. The show's too good and the fans are going to be happy. No well, doubt. Well, I, I hope I hope you're right. Have you been right about this stuff in the past? I would say 75, 80 percent. I'm, I'm glad you're not wearing a Firefly T-shirt right now, but uh <laughs> <laughs> No, but every once in a while, you know, um, uh, like I, well, every once in a while, like Netflix has had a show that clearly they have the numbers, but they choose not to make another season. Yeah. So that's how I can be. Yeah. Yeah. You know? No, I, I, I think we're all in a moment of like uh, qu questioning how much we understand the business of the business. Um, uh, and yeah, anything could happen, of course. What do you think? And I have so many questions. How much did you figure out? the Bible of like vault 33 and the surrounding vaults in terms of the history, 
laying out like everything. So in case you need to go back and you know what I mean? When you're writing about it, you know, everything. And how much is it sort of like we're, we'll figure it out later when we need it. Well, I mean, with such a short season, you figure everything out kind of early uh, because you don't have that much space. I think in a uh, if we were to do a 24 episode version of this show, which would be so fun, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but um, also, I don't think I think our fatality rate would be high. Uh, but like um, you have to in the 24 episode model, you have to engage in a, a fair bit more improvising. Um, uh by necessity, because you just don't, you cannot figure out that level of detail for that long. But with eight episodes, you, you, it's about, it's more about fitting in what you have figured out and is there space and it feeling like you're just jamming the suitcase a little bit um, with all of the ideas you had before you even started writing. Um, yeah. Sure. So we have ideas from season one that didn't make it into season one and that we hope to get into there in season two, just based on running time alone. Well, the, the thing is, it's eight episodes. How much was that a prime video decision? How much is that a your decision? Uh, it was, I think it was a suggestion. And by the end of it, I was grateful for it because it was, you know, a first season is, I don't know, I've likened it, this to uh, giving birth to a monster truck. It's like, a, it's a lot at once. Um, uh, and, you know, we wrote the show without really, uh, we had a room hired without a pilot to look at. Um, first seasons are just tough by, by nature. You're, you're kind of wandering in the dark a little bit collectively. Um, so yeah, I, I think an eight episode was a merciful amount for considering the scope of this show. One of the things about a first season is you're learning the infrastructure of a show yeah. and how you can make it and where you spend the money. And like, there's so much you figure out that you can then apply to a second season. So what were some of the big lessons you learned when you were actually making it that you will be able to apply, you know, if you are lucky enough to get a second season. I, uh, mm, I, I'm trying to like not spoil things. Uh, but, uh, I think, uh, well, look, we, we were in a spot where we were writing scripts and shooting at the same time. I really, uh, I'm hoping that we're in a spot this year and that was all part of like the, you know, we've got a, a one episode order. Let's turn it into an eight episode order in success. I hope that um, we can do what we've done uh, in cable and streaming for a while now, which is fully write the show uh, and then be be done and produce the show. And thanks to the new WJ rules, we'll be able to have writers on set uh, learning the, the infrastructure of the show with us and, uh, um, you know, uh, giving it all that much more attention. But. Yeah, I guess that'd be that. That's a whole other thing, though. And I've had I've spoken to so many people that if you have all eight episodes, you can block shoot. You can shoot everything on the set that you need on that set that yeah. saves you time down the road. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's I mean, you go. We we shot in Utah. We shot in Namibia. We shot, you know, in New York. Um, we didn't block shoot, but we kind of did, <laughs> you know, like it, sort of at some point. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of that would be. um I, I'm sure we could be a little more economic with our spend uh, if, if we leaned a little further in that direction. But last question for you. Um, you get to do you get to reveal like the vault boy imagery, which is never you, you get to do cool things that have never been done before. How much when you're doing stuff like that, do you have to talk to key people at Bethesda and, and negotiate stuff? And how much is it sort of like you have the freedom to do what you want? Well, we we send them a script and then we have a conversation. Um, and you know, uh, those guys have been very, very cool and very open. Uh, um, I think they sort of see us as like a free set of fresh eyes, uh, you know, on their franchise. Um, and, uh, there are certain things that they're like, no, we've tried this in the past and it's, it's very conversational. Um, and, you know, sometimes we'll be bumping into things that are happening in future games that they're planning, uh, but we kind of live in our own sort of uh, silo that that coexists with their multiple silos um, they have. I completely understand. Listen, I got to wrap. I'm just going to say congrats. Really looking forward to seeing the last four episodes. Thanks, man. Really appreciate it. 